Happy April, everybody. Welcome to Looking Up. This is a podcast for Christian women. I'm Kathy Pollard, and with me is Carla Moore. We're your hosts, and we're excited on this beautiful spring day. I can see the sun is shining where you are, the sun is shining where I am. We're just going to have a good time today and maybe probably talk about a little bit of nonsense (laughs) or just kind of chit chat and in the very best sort of way. Valuable um, nonsense. When this airs, it'll be April 1st, April Fool's Day. Oh, I didn't realize that. Yeah. So hard to believe already coming into April and coming into my favorite time of year with everything growing and springy and all the beautiful things. So I'm excited about mm-hmm. chatting with you. And I did want to ask you, um, why is everyone so tired on April 1st? This is a joke. <laughs> I don't know. Why is everyone so tired on April 1st? Because we just finished a 31 day March. (laughs) (laughs) Sounds like a dad joke. Okay. What about (laughs) why don't eggs pull April fool's pranks? Why? Because they're afraid they might crack each other up. (laughs) (laughs) All right. That one's okay. Good job. Maybe, maybe I should just move on from that. I would have practiced my laugh if I had known you were going to tell jokes. <laughs> oh, made it sound more sincere. Yeah. You know, <laughs> not a, not a courtesy laugh. Love. Yeah. <laughs> sound like you think it's really funny. <laughs> yeah. Please. Well, I'm, I'm here and John's here and you know how we have this thing where we don't like our husbands to be here. And you and I've been talking for an hour now and John was completely silent. And now he's on the phone. I can hear him loud. Can you hear him? No, not at all. Okay. All right. Never mind. And speaking of here, you're here is you're back in Dripping Springs, Texas. Yeah. Yeah, We're back. Finally, you just got home last night. In fact, Mm -hmm. right. So glad you made it home safely. And yeah, I, and I I like it. We're on this when we're on the same time zone. Yeah. Cause we don't have to do any math. Mm-hmm. <laughs> the last month that we've been doing, well, I mean, we didn't record when we were gone. You and I didn't record when we were gone, but mm-hmm. the math was crazy because for some reason, Turkey was 10 hours ahead of, I may have this a little bit wrong, but Turkey was 10 hours ahead of central standard time here mm-hmm. in the States, but Athens was only eight hours ahead. But when daylight savings happened here in the States, then that messed things up again, because then we were, we had gone from Turkey to Greece. And to me, it would have been the other way around. Like, I know I'm confusing mm. you because I'm completely <laughs> confused. I felt like Athens should have been 10 hours because it it's further east. But the whole time, you know, you're trying to figure out what time, if can I call my kid for whatever, mm-hmm. but what time is it there? And you're doing, okay, 2 p.m. means that it's, 2 a.m. minus two hour. Anyway, it was mm-hmm. ridiculous, crazy. So I'm just glad to be on the same time zone as my children well, and you and my mom. When I wanted to text you, I'd be thinking, is she in bed right now? What's going on? Is it <laughs> is it nighttime over there? <laughs> no idea. Where, yeah. where in the world is Carla Moore? <laughs> yeah. And I got to thinking last night, I was like, we got to finally get in our own bed. And I oh, started wonderful. counting. Yeah. We were in 15 different beds in 25 days. Oh crazy oh no not that fun. sounds terrible before yeah, I, I forget I'm, go ahead finish your well I don't want to I'm not complaining I'm just it was just one of those things where like 15 different and that's counting two airplane <sighs> beds you know yeah so gnarly yeah anyway go ahead before I forget I wanted to say that we are going to share a fun announcement on this episode at mm-hmm. some point yeah so yeah. stay to the end. Stay Don't to fast the forward to the end. <laughs> In fact, if you fast forward to the end, we're not going to tell you. Uh, have you been thrifting since you've been back? I actually. <laughs> it's last night. <laughs> it's last night. I actually told John we were on our way back to, to Texas from Colorado. And I said, John, I haven't been in a thrift store in over a month. And he was starting to have withdrawals, weren't you? He said, well, I'm just really proud of you for being sober for 28 days. Oh oh no. (laughs) So no, I have not been thrifting. I'm, I'm like twitching because I want to, but I just haven't had any time to do it. So that tick shows up every now and then. Yeah. That's what, that's why, because I need to thrift something somewhere. Yeah. Well, hopefully you'll get a chance sometime this week. 
I hope so. Find yeah. something good to talk about next time. Yeah. Okay. Uh huh. I don't need anything <laughs> else, but it's just fun to go. Well, I have what's going really, on in your neck I have of the woods? Some really neat news. Um, okay. Neil, I'm just going to share this very briefly, but Neil has been studying with this gentleman for two and a half years, every single week, and mm. he got baptized this week. Mm, that's wonderful. After yeah. two and a half years, so mm -hmm. I just think that's remarkable. You know, talk yeah. about not giving up on somebody. Mm -hmm. As you know, if they're willing to keep studying, uh, just not giving up because the power's in the word and you never know. So, right. Well, and you, you told me this, about this a little bit ago and I'm just thinking about Neil not, not giving up and not wanting to back away from it because, he, you know, sometimes like well, we were talking about how you feel like maybe they just don't, they're not interested really, mm -hmm. but then you just keep at it and, mm -hmm. and allow God to work on people's hearts instead of putting the power in ourselves. And it really makes a difference. Well, and I'm happy for him, of course, but I just think about, you know, if we have family members or loved ones that we've been worried about for any length of time, you know, uh, and it could be a situation where they've never obeyed the gospel. It could be mm -hmm. a situation where they've fallen away and we feel like their hearts aren't receptive, you know, just, yeah. it's just such a good reminder not to give up, you know, place them in, do what you can. Um, place them in God's hands, but you just never know, you know, yeah. as long as time stands, mm -hmm. there's still, there's still opportunity. So. Mm -hmm. We all have had quite a number of baptisms recently, haven't you? Yes, we have. Yeah. It's, yeah. it's, uh, it's been so wonderful. And well, it's funny that you brought that up because I just saw, um, you know, they keep information for the office and stuff. We've had 10, 10 baptisms already this year and the neat thing is they all haven't been done by the preachers mm -hmm. you know and um so it's just encouraging to see all the hands yeah going to work and soul winning that's great yeah. happy news very happy news yeah yeah um tell me what's going on in your world <laughs> um aside from 10 15 beds in 25 days <laughs> um well we are back in like like you mentioned we're back in texas so um we left Colorado on Friday. This we're recording. This is Thursday, right? So we left mm -hmm. Colorado last Friday. We went to Oklahoma. We went to Elk City and stayed with uh, Brad and Glenda Winery. I know that y'all mm -hmm. have stayed there before too. Yes, they're so. And sweet. she had three calves born. Two of them were born, I think, the day before we got there. But then on Sunday, when we went to worship, she said that, uh, on the way, she said, "I hope I have a new baby when we get back." And sure enough. It so was the fun. brand new little baby calf, Aww. little pink nose. You know, I don't know. I, I don't know why I noticed the little calf had such a pink nose, but I guess to, does peaches have a pink nose? Brown <laughs> nose? Anyway, I just always think of a cow <laughs> as having like a dirty, not necessarily dirty, but a dirty color mm -hmm. nose. Mm -hmm. And this little calf was bright pink. He had a white spot on his forehead and was still like wobbling around when we saw him. Oh, his little back legs were just shaking and he was trying, it was so cute. Cause he was trying to find, he was trying to nurse yeah. and he kept, you know, butting his head up against her, like her front legs. <laughs> and we, I was with Glenda in the truck and we kept watching and, and he, I don't, I can't remember if it's a little girl calf or a little boy, but he just, I'll say he kept butting up against the wrong spots. And we were going just a little <laughs> further back, a little further back. Keep, keep trying, keep trying. He never hot. did find it. Cold. Oh, yeah. Goodness. Well, he didn't find it when we were watching, but Glenda said he obviously already had because of some reason. I can't remember. She knew that 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 the cat the cow had already nursed the baby, but I guess he forgot where to find the faucet because he couldn't find it when we were <laughs> watching it. That was so cute. Anyway, that was oh. that was this weekend. John did a, a seminar in uh, Burns Flat, Oklahoma, which is real close to Elk City, and then we went from there on Monday morning to Fort Worth to see Jake and Liz and Turner and Darcy. I hadn't seen them since just right after Christmas. I think we, we stopped there on our way to Colorado. Mm -hmm. And of course, Darcy has changed so much because she was only like, I don't know, eight weeks old. When we saw her and now she's almost oh. five minutes old. Mm -hmm. So she was a lot of fun and Turner's just, it was fun. So then we left there yesterday and got home here yesterday evening and unpacked and you can only see this right here, <laughs> but if you could see all of this, everything is uh, unpacked. Oh, everything is taken out of the boxes, but not everything not put is put away. away. Yeah. yeah. 
So that's going to take me a little while. And, you know, since we were coming back for a longer length of time this time, it's, I brought more of it home with me and we still have a full room full of stuff in Denver Mm -hmm. that we'll have to get later. But, um, but so I brought back kitchen things that I really didn't need, you know, it's like combining two kitchens into one now. So I need to weed through and kind of figure out what I want to keep and, and, um, what I'm, if I'm going to take it back to them, I don't know what I'm going to do yet, but I just have too much, too much stuff. And, you know, we had talked not long ago about, we got rid of a lot of things and now I feel like it's all filling back up again. And I don't like that. I don't like that feeling. So easy like for that to happen. Yeah, yeah it really yeah. is. Mm-hmm. So that's kind of where we are. We're home for another, um, we have a family fishing trip next weekend that, mm-hmm. that we've been doing every year for the past few years. And then we have Focal Point, which is coming up in San Marcos, Texas, April the 14th through the 18th. So if anybody is close by, we'd love to have you for that. Um, mm. What that's the, it's like, it started out as a preacher's workshop and Wayne Jones started it. But again, it's open to anyone and it's got some really good lessons and topics and um, it would be good. And then from there, we're going to come y'all's way. Looking Yay! forward to Equipped. Why don't you talk Equipped. about Equipped? Well, yeah, it'll be here and by the time this airs less than three weeks and everybody's getting real excited and getting things set up and, um, you know, we have food trucks, we'll have a little bookstore, we're going to have a singing workshop, a teaching workshop, lots of sessions. And then of course you and I are joining our podcast episode live Mm -hmm. at the workshop. So lots of other lady speakers too. Um, and then there's sessions for young people. So uh, should be good. I know I always ask you about the food trucks, but I'm just curious which ones are going to be there this year besides Jeremy's barbecue. I don't know. Well, find okay. out. You're supposed to find out and tell me. <laughs> Let me write that down. Yeah. <laughs> food trucks. This is something I need to know. This is this is what matters, right? It's here. all about which, food, you know. Which food trucks? Yeah. I'm yeah. sure they'll be fantastic. <laughs> I'm sure they will. Speaking of food, speaking which is a food. frequent topic. I, I heard, I'm trying to, I guess it was Glenda, maybe it was Brad that told us that his mom used, she made cornbread in a waffle iron. Have you ever done that? I've, no, I've seen that done, but I've never, I've never seen, never seen it. People do that and then they'll top it with chili and cheese. Genius. Yeah. And I don't have a waffle iron. Oh. Yeah. So now I'm thinking, would it be like a Belgian waffle where you make it really thick and with mm. the deep holes or just a regular waffle, but you could put that like, mm. I'm thinking you can make it with chili, like you said, chili, but stew and other mm-hmm. things like that. So mm-hmm. hmm. yeah, I thought that was a fantastic idea. That is a good idea. Yeah. yeah. That would hold the butter. Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> We always go back to food, don't we? We do. I actually have foodie things to talk about because I was going to, um, when Neil travels, if he's ever near an interesting chocolate shop, he'll usually bring some back. And he found, well, he was told about this chocolate shop called the Cordial Cherry. <clears throat> Excuse me. Look at this cute little box. Oh, that is cute. And then the whole thing was wrapped. It took me forever to get into this box because the whole thing was wrapped in bubble wrap. And I was like, good mm-hmm. grief. They're really making it hard to get into And then it had this little, you know, sealed paper opening Mm -hmm. on the inside there. But look, they're themed chocolates. Can you see that? It's like a beehive? Yes, these are honey themed. It's a beehive, a bumblebee, a couple of flowers. Aren't they adorable? They're so cute. They are really too cute to eat. So I haven't even eaten them yet. But look how cute. Is it white chocolate? I don't know what that is. (laughs) I haven't eaten any of them. (laughs) Yeah, I don't think I'd be able to eat it. Uh, Neil's been saying, have you tried one yet? Have you tried one yet? And I'm like, no. <laughs> Did he eat any when he was there? I don't think so. I think it just bought that for me. So oh, that's sweet. It's very sweet. But um, the other foodie things I was going to share with you is a couple of things involving Lehman Avenue ladies. So this Friday I'm having my mom and Ray over and Bud and Christy over for dinner. And I'm making a recipe that Kelly Nix told me about. Mm-hmm. And it's very intriguing sounding. And she said that it's good. And everybody that has made it says it's good. And like people always ask him for the recipe. So it's, um, I forget 
what it's called, pinto bean corn <laughs> casserole or something like that. But it's basically a couple of cans of pinto beans drained and rotel tomatoes and cream of mushroom soup and cheese. Oh, sausage, mm -hmm. ground brown sausage. Okay. Um, maybe some onions. I can't remember. But anyway, you mix all that stuff together spread it in your 13 by nine, nine inch pan. And then you make a package of Jiffy cornbread. Mm -hmm, the mix. sweet cornbread. Yeah. But you thin it out a little bit thinner than usual and pour that on top and bake it. Oh, and she said yummy. that she likes to put jalapenos in the cornbread topping and bake mm -hmm. it. So I'm going to try that Friday when everybody comes over. And then, so Sunday is Easter. Are you guys eating at your house or do you have plans at somebody else's house? What are y'all doing? We're going to go to Courtney's parents' house. Oh, so we get to see Libby. Yeah. Well, that'll be fun. They're sweet enough to invite us. Yeah. Yeah. That's Actually, so nice. I don't know if they know that we're coming. Courtney oh. invited us. So <laughs> maybe I need to check with Lori. <laughs> we're looking forward to being there. Can we bring yeah. anything? <laughs> yeah. Oh, you're coming? Oh. oh. <laughs> well, so the kids are coming over. Okay. And I was talking to Joyce Johnson last night. We were, we had plenty of time to chat because we were the last ones there and both of our husbands were meeting together. <laughs> So you know how that goes. Yep. Yep. When you're waiting around in the foyer for your husband. <laughs> but, yeah, you get to know the other women really well. Yeah. So we were talking and I was telling her that, you know, we have such a busy weekend. Normally for Easter dinner, I like to make things ahead of time, but I didn't know when I was going to be able to do that. And so anyway, she ended up giving me like the best recipe ideas. She gave me a recipe for an easy ham in the crock pot with a glaze that's really, sounds really yummy. And mm -hmm. then um, make ahead mashed potatoes that you keep in the refrigerator hmm. and you can keep it in the refrigerator for two weeks. So like you can make really? a big batch and just pull out what you want over the next hmm. two weeks. But so I could make it today, you know, and then pull it out on Easter and you just mm -hmm. dot it with butter and bake it, but it's got cream cheese and sour cream and all that kind of stuff. In it. Ooh, yeah. And um, so we we're talking about all this stuff and then, on the way home, I must have sounded really pathetic because she texted me that she would be happy to make either a gooey cake or an orange cake for our Easter dinner. So oh, sweet. She is famous for her orange cake. Mm. <laughs> that was one of the first things we heard about when we moved here. Mm -hmm. And so I get this text and I'm going, I know I should say no. <laughs> I know you? I should say Oh, that's so sweet. But of course I, uh, no, we'll be fine. I was like, oh, I would love that so much. Yeah. And then you put it behind, <laughs> as my mother used to say, behind the door and save uh, it. And just yeah, that's right. Yourself. Don't actually mm -hmm. share it with company. Yeah. But wasn't that the sweetest thing? That so, is so sweet. Like two meals that I'm having this weekend with company are thanks to mm -hmm. dear friends from church, you know, yep. Kelly Nix, Joyce Johnson. And I just love that. So mm -hmm. that, that makes fun. me think of of the Jan Karen books that or Esther Bollock's orange marmalade cake. Oh, Are you yeah. still reading those? Well, I've kind of put it on pause. I'm at yeah. number seven, I think, or okay. eight, seven yeah. or eight, but I'm kind of getting this feeling of if I finish the series, I'm finished with the series. There's quite a few more though. I'm trying yeah. to think there's at least 10. Maybe? I know, Let but it. I, I know, just want to be sad. done with it. So I read something else instead. I'm like, oh, yeah. I'll read that next one later. You know, I'm like yeah. dragging it out. So. Yeah, I love those books. They're so fun. They are so good. They're so well, good. Alyssa made a new recipe. I don't know if it was new to her, but it was new to us when we were there. That was, um, they were just called chicken tacos. I think just chicken tacos, but they were made with green chili. So she, it had like verde salsa and chicken, rotisserie chicken, and Monterey Jack cheese, and cilantro, and probably some cream cheese. And then she, and I'm sure some other things, but she put them inside a hard taco shell and then put them on a cookie sheet with parchment paper and sprinkled cheese on top of it. So when she put them in the oven, mm. all of the cheese like melted around the shell. So when you pick it up, you know, there's this hard cheese around it that, oh, so good. That sounds amazing. Yeah. And I, when I made my grocery order last night to pick up on the way home, I added everything and they didn't have rotisserie chicken. So I didn't get to make it last night, but that's definitely going on my to make list. She's always you got some good. Definitely stuff. need to share that recipe in the group yeah. so that yeah. I can I'll make myself that. a note. I, I want that right now. Yeah, that it's, sounds it's really, really good. good. 
I've done that with teens in the word with the the hard taco shells, but just with regular ground beef filling, you mm-hmm. know, and top them all with cheese so that we can melt the cheese all at one time. And that's good. Yeah. But yeah, these were good. That sounds way better. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. Well, we've had um, a fluorescent light in our laundry room, which I absolutely hate, detest. I just cannot stand fluorescent lighting. And mm-hmm. Um, it's there. It's in our walk-in closet in the bedroom <clears throat> and it's in the basement. We have fluorescent lighting down there. So I think we've talked about this on here before, but Neil is always leaving that laundry room light on. And so <clears throat> I'm always coming behind him and turning it off. <laughs> like in broad daylight, he turns that light on. I don't know why, but anyway, this week he replaced it. He took nice. And it's where everybody comes in the house. Nobody comes in the front door. Everybody comes through our laundry room. So Mm -hmm. that's like the first thing people see. So he took down that fluorescent lighting, put up a new light. It's so much better. And it's, you know, it's a warmer lighting. It makes a huge difference. And I've gotten so used to now avoiding that light. I never turn it on. I put a lamp in there that I could turn on just to avoid turning on the overhead light that I forget that I have it. So mm-hmm. <laughs> now I'm thinking, oh, I can turn this light on and it's pretty. <laughs> mm-hmm. It's okay to turn this light on. Yeah. Well, yeah. Confirmed and it. Where did you get the light fixture? I ordered it online. We looked okay. at a few, few places in town, but I just didn't really see anything that I liked. Mm-hmm. So I found something online. Good. And it had to be pretty short because we have cabinets in there that open up right where mm-hmm. the light fixture yeah. would go. So it needed to be narrow enough to where it wouldn't hit that. The cabinet yeah. wouldn't hit it. So that yeah. limited what we could get. But. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, we were talking on our way home, you know, you have 14 hours to talk. So we were talking <laughs> about, I, I packed up all my things in my office at Bear Valley to bring home. And I didn't realize how much stuff I had in there. And I even had to leave some of it there that I'll get next time when we come back. But um, I told John, I I would like to turn one of the back bedrooms, one of the boys' bedrooms into an office or, Mm -hmm. you know, office slash sewing room for me. And um, so we were just talking about how we could accomplish that. And I wanted to keep a bed, like a Murphy bed, because only once, once a year, maybe twice a year, do we have everyone home where we need all of the rooms for beds. So it's not, I, I just, it feels like, why are we, why are we not taking advantage of that space that we have? to use yes. every day instead of mm-hmm. saving it for once a year. Ooh, Sorry to whichever so one exciting. of my boys. Yeah. But so I was thinking that I would have like an office sewing room back there. And John said, you know, what if you took the office slash game room that we have? And you know what I'm talking about? The one outside, just outside the kitchen uh, that he uses for an office. And he would go in the back because then he would have a little bit more quiet. Cause when he's in there, a lot of times I have the TV on in here or I'm cooking yeah. or I'm talking or I'm listening to music, whatever. <clears throat> so I'm excited about that because I'll have lots of That's room. That's a way here. bigger space. It is right? way bigger. Yeah. Nice. I mean, it's, it's our garage that used mm-hmm. to be, it, it was first a garage, then a game room. Now it's an office and now we'll do something again to change it to, so I can leave my sewing machine out, which I never get <gasps> to do. And, you know, it probably will get a little messy in there but I think sometimes he gets a little frustrated with me because I spread out on the kitchen table here mm-hmm. but I don't have anywhere else to put it because mm-hmm. all of those are bedrooms back there so I'm excited that I'm gonna Isn't have a space. It so fun yeah. to repurpose space or mm-hmm. come up with a new project like that it is yay yeah. I'm excited I can't wait to see it when yeah. you get it yeah. all done mm-hmm. well we um I told Neil the other day I said I have a little project I want to run by you <laughs> The words they dread. A I know. I could see that look on his face, like oh, deer in the headlights. <laughs> yeah. It's really not a big one. It, it doesn't mm-hmm. involve taking down walls or anything like that. Mm-hmm. But my pantry in the kitchen is ridiculous. I can I cannot keep it organized. There's I'm trying just, to remember where it even is. When you first walk into the kitchen, it's just this little double door thing across from the fridge on the left. Yes, across from the okay. fridge. Um. And it's got some shelves in there, but I've tried like bins to organize everything. It just will not mm-hmm. stay organized and we never have enough room for everything. Yeah. And so I saw this video the other day, a farmhouse on Boone, where she turned her basement into, she was calling it a grocery store. 
And she got those kind of like um, heavy duty steel shelving Mm -hmm. units from Sam's, several of those. And so that's where she, and and she set down like a little rug to make the area pretty. And so she took all of their stuff out of her pantry, except for things that she uses on a regular basis. Yeah. And just organized it down there. And I'm talking about, I mean, we could put our, we always have extra paper towels and napkins mm-hmm. and things like that stored somewhere else in the house. All in one place. Yes. And we have um, extra canning jars in a different room and extra, I mean, just stuff all over the place. And as soon as I saw that, I was like, that is the solution because we have a wonderful finished out basement. We hardly mm-hmm. ever use it except for working out. Yeah. And like you were saying, there's an extra bedroom down there, which we only use when everybody's here, you know, mm-hmm. or Neil's parents are here because um, they'll stay in our room and we'll go down there. But there's a great big pool table when you first walk down to the basement in the biggest space mm-hmm. and we never use it. The pool when, table. Yeah. When we first looked at the house, we loved it. It's a really nice one. And so we asked for it to convey with the house. Little mm-hmm. did we know they were probably hoping we would do that anyway. Yeah. <laughs> But when we, so when we first moved here, we used it all the time and now we never, ever, ever use it. I mean, the kids mm-hmm. never use it. When people come over, they, we never use it, you know? Yeah. Cause you and, have to go downstairs. Yeah. And so it's just taking up space. So now I want to get rid of the pool table and just put up those shelving units and maybe some plants and a rug and just have everything neatly organized mm-hmm. and just what we use on the regular in the pantry in the kitchen and oh that would just make my life my everyday quality of life so much better <laughs> that sounds really good I wonder the next project Neil you need to do is having a dumb waiter from the basement to the kitchen I know, so she's I know. just <laughs> although I do things. need the steps I it yeah. will it will force me to get those steps in yeah. and, you know, so it'll probably a take a little while for you to figure out what things you want to leave down there and what things yeah. you need on hand in the kitchen. But yeah, it sounds like well, a see, great I solution. always get bread flour in a great big bag and mm-hmm. I keep a little bit in the pantry up here and the rest mm-hmm. of it in the basement anyway. Yeah. And, um, you know, so there's things like that, that we always buy the great big multi-packs of San Pellegrino and mm-hmm. that takes up a lot of space in the closet here. And so I'm excited about that. So is that going to happen soon? I hope so. The biggest challenge for us is going to be getting rid of that pool table because I'm hoping we can sell it. I looked that up. Do people actually buy used pool tables? Sure. sure And you pretty much, yes, you pretty much have to get a professional to dismantle it Mm -hmm. (laughs) and move it. So, (laughs) Uh, well, Well, good luck with that. That sounds good. We have a piano out here that was my grandmother's that mom got when my grandmother moved from her house and it used to be an old player piano, which was fun. Mm, So there's a, a, I think it was my grandmother's. I'm not sure. hundred percent sure, but it was at my mom and dad's house. So where, you know, where you set the music up, there's a square, an inset of wood that used to be open where you could see the player um, running, but Mm -hmm. it's so out of tune. Oh. It really turns into something that the grandkids just go pound on when they're here. <laughs> and Lacey Deaver or Lacey Summers used to play the piano when she'd come here. So I don't know if we're going to keep that because it just takes up a whole lot of room and we don't use it for anything. Mm-hmm. But again, that's one of those things you may have to have professionally moved. I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. So, hmm. yeah. Well, um, I don't know. Well, how I wanted to show you chatting. something unless. Oh, oh, yeah, go ahead. Let me show you. Lynn Height made this what is because it? it's a it's a laptop Hemingway holder couch oh it's for my ipad but oh. it's it unzips and so it's like this pocket that you can you could carry a notebook or a paper but it's sized for my ipad she heard me say that i was going to experiment with this pattern because i liked it and so she for my birthday brought me this and i didn't even bring in the tote bag she made Gift giving is her love language for sure, but she, she made all these little things and it's just a little tiny Hemingway pouch and I kept snacks in it during our trip, but I just Cute. love them. I just think they're so fun and I'm going she's to make so some of them when I get my, she is, she's so generous and sweet, makes always making mm-hmm. things for people. So just mm-hmm. wanted to show you that. That's beautiful. Yeah. That's beautiful. Um, 
trying to see if there's anything else before we get into our non-topic. Non-topic. Do you have anything else? <laughs> well, I had a couple of things, but they're not Go anything. Ahead. We probably, since it's been 30 minutes, we probably should move on, huh? Okay. So we're just um, going to do always, sometimes, never. So when you think about, and and to clear it up from the get-go, these aren't like important things at all. Yeah, <laughs> so we're not talking fun. about things that we hope is a given with everybody that we all always try to read our Bibles and pray. You know, it's not that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, just every day in our lives, if you want to know more about what that looks like, here are some things that we always do, some things that we sometimes do, some things that we never do. So that's yeah. what I thought we would do. But I wanted to start out by asking you, Carla, some questions. Oh, boy. Okay. These aren't hard. This makes me sweaty. Oh, a couple of them might be hard. No, oh, most great. most <laughs> most of them aren't. Um, so you just say you don't even have to clarify. You just say always, sometimes, or never. Okay. Okay. How Sounds often? Simple. <laughs> how often do you pull pranks on others? Sometimes. I know that about you. <laughs> <laughs> I used to have a Burger King mask. You know those big full oh, no. head Burger King mask. Yeah. Along with a dummy mannequin. And we had a young friend, Luke Stone, who hated that thing. And I had so much fun. Every time he came over, I would put the Burger King mask on the dummy and just set it somewhere in the house and wait for him to find it. It was great. Yeah. So I'm that kind of person. I know. Not always. But I think of um, yeah. Tyler King. Yeah. And he had just said something about that not too long ago. Was it the Barney the dinosaur or something yeah. that he was afraid of? Yeah. And so I think it was your idea. <laughs> I think it was your idea to put that thing on his I motorcycle. What you're talking about. <laughs> okay. How often do you listen to music? Always. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. How often do you go to the movies? Uh, sometimes. More often oh. lately with The Chosen being in theaters. Yeah. Was that the last one you saw? Mm -hmm. What was the last one you saw for that? Chosen part two, <laughs> chosen part one oh. before that, um, maybe the Indiana Jones movie, the new okay. one. Yeah. All right. Um, Do you? Sometimes. Okay. I would have said never, except that all those big blockbuster type movies came out not too long ago and we went and mm -hmm. saw all of them. <laughs> yeah. So. Uh -huh. Um, how often do you engage in a hobby? Um, I would say sometimes, but there's always a, but right. Mm -hmm. Less often than I want to, but hoping that I'll be able to more. I'm really hoping that sewing I can pull, since I can leave it out, that will be something that I would do unless you consider reading a hobby. And that, if it is, then always, cause I read all the time. So, mm -hmm. okay. What about you? Um, sometimes. Yeah. I feel like sometimes my whole life is a hobby though. <laughs> Well, if you think about peaches and cooking, because those right. are two of the things you enjoy doing and gardening, gardening and baking, yeah. all that kind of stuff are, are hobbyish kind of things. Yeah. But so, and like you, I, life. I read every night in bed before I go to sleep for a few minutes. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. So until you're. Exactly. Uh, okay. How often do you hide snacks? Is John listening? <laughs> um, I would I would say there's always something hidden. I don't know hidden's the right word. There's always something that's a little harder to find. That's right. Yes, I can think of two different things right now that are hidden. Uh, Hope he didn't listen to this. That's well, you don't have to say where. Yeah. Does he know that about you? Yeah. Oh, okay. Well, then it doesn't. Matter. In fact, <laughs> well, there were some M and M's. I can't remember how it came up, but he found out, I think I gave him some and he said, where'd you get these? And I said, I just have some. He said, where? I said, I have them because <laughs> he is a snacker. I mean, he will, he would mm. eat them all day long till they're gone. I can keep a whole thing, you know, one of those tubs of M&Ms. I could keep it for a year 
and I could eat maybe one or two or three a day and I'd be happy, but he would eat them Mm -hmm. till they were gone in less than a week. So it's for (laughs) his own good. There you go. Being thoughtful. That's that's my story and I'm sticking to it. You're you're a thoughtful wife. Neil and I are very compatible. Do you hide things? No, I don't have to. We do not like the same snacks at all. We have completely different snack attacks. And even when it comes to a box of chocolates, um, the ones that I like the, you know, in the box of chocolates, he doesn't like, and the ones that he likes, I don't like. So it's convenient. It's very convenient. Mm -hmm. Okay. How often do you work from bed? Um, I would say it would be somewhere between never and sometimes Mm -hmm. just because that's not what I'll read. And that's about all read in bed. Mm -hmm. So Mm -hmm. no, I don't ever carry my computer in there. Mm -hmm. Do you? Well, first thing in the morning when we have our coffee, we're sitting on the bed and I'll have Mm -hmm. my laptop open. So sometimes I'm answering messages and things like that. Yeah. No, I get up. But typically I, yeah, I come in the dining room or. Yeah. Hmm. Set everything up in there. Okay. (laughs) How often do you dance around the house? (laughs) That is definite never. I have zero rhythm. I know you do because I've heard you say I've never seen you do it. I wouldn't, I would kind of like to see how that goes, but I have no, I have zero rhythm. No, I have zero. Mm -hmm. I have zero rhythm. Also, just ask Dale because he loves to point that out. Um, and the last one, this one might be kind of hard. You Uh ready? Okay. Mm -hmm. How often do you feel like people know the real you? Um, I guess sometimes would be probably better than, and I mean, it's not always or never. So sometimes there are mm-hmm. few that know the really stupid me and the really goofy or, or embarrassing or whatever. So sometimes, I don't know. What do you think? What about you? I would say the same answer, but I feel like you gave the wrong answer. Really? Really? Well, I'm probably, I think I know where you're going with that. Like I'm pretty open with things, but Mm -hmm. is that what you mean? Like I'm pretty open, but, but that's not necessarily all of me though, you know? Yeah. But it's the real you. I feel like you're very, you're, you're somebody that's what you see is what you get. Like you're the real deal. Very genuine. I guess I'm thinking more of like the, really the inside thoughts and the, the things that I'm not going to tell just everybody. There's Mm -hmm. probably few, you know, count on one hand, the number of people I would tell some of those things to. So yeah. Yeah. What about mm-hmm. you? Uh, yeah. Sometimes, sometimes, sometimes few people. Yeah. yeah. I'm not super very, guarded. Very, I'm not really guarded, but I'm also not, I think it takes longer for me to get close to people. Yeah. I have That's more fair. superficial friends. <laughs> yeah. Well, cause it's hard. It takes time to get to that non-superficial friendship. Yeah. And you don't always have that amount of time. Yeah. Okay. Good job. You passed. Thank you. You're welcome. Okay. I didn't so know I was going to be I, graded. <laughs> <clears throat> um, this is not, maybe you should talk for a while. Cause I got a, I got a frog right now. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> unprepared. Okay. Do you go to bed every night with dishes in your sink? How often do you go to bed with dishes in your sink? I never do that. Okay. You always do the dishes. I always do the dishes. I always, I never have dishes in the sink. We always run the dishwasher before we go to bed and unload it in the morning. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, I'd say that I used to be that way. I used to not Mm -hmm. be able to stand leaving dishes in the sink, but I think one thing that changed when I had this farmhouse sink, and it's not really a true farmhouse sink, but the one big opening instead of two sinks, I can put a whole ton of stuff down in there that you can't see. Like I'm looking at it right now and I know there's dirty dishes in there, but you can't see them. So Mm -hmm. yeah. Let's see. What else can I ask you? Um, How often do you mow the yard? Me? Mm -hmm. (laughs) Never. That'd be a never? That'd be a never. Yeah. Neil, we have a zero turn Mm -hmm. and I got on it for, I mean, when we first got it, I got on it for like a nanosecond. And then last mm-hmm. summer I did just a few strips, you know, cause Neil was just mm-hmm. showing me how to do it. 
And I kind of, in my mind thought that was kind of fun. I should mow more often. And then I never did. Yeah. That's what, I, that's Neil's job. Yeah. I probably do. I do the easy stuff, mm-hmm. like the flat areas. And John is the one that goes in and around the trees and stuff and the rocks. Cause we have a ton of rocks. So oh, yeah. mine would be a sometimes. Yeah. I'm a little bit of a chicken. We have a lot of trees and I always think about things dropping down on me. <laughs> I do think about the hornet's nests snakes. that are in the yeah. ground. Yeah. 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 But <laughs> it's funny when I'm mowing, sometimes I find myself doing this, like I'm driving, <laughs> like, I'm, like that's really going to help to hunch down. If I see something flying at me, I am a, I am not, how do I say this? I am. I'm scared of things that fly at me. If they have stingers, I'm very scared of them. I will make a fool out of myself getting out of its way. Oh. So I've surprised myself being outside as much as I have the last couple of years. Yeah, we have a ton. And unfortunately, they're right by the entryway where everybody comes in. Yeah, We have those um, carpenter bees and wasps and just all kinds of things flying. They have never once bothered us. So it doesn't bother me at all. But I don't ever might. think about it. <laughs> That's my theory. But yeah, somebody afraid of flying, stinging things might have a problem with that. Yes. I, and that's me. <clears throat> How often do you make the bed? Every day. Me always. Too. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That's an always for me too. And, we were and, and you know, everybody, it was funny. Someone recently when we were at their house and I won't say who it was, but she went and closed the door. She said, because I haven't made my bed today. I'm like, she said, I make it every day except Saturday. And I thought that's just whatever. Every whatever day except with. Saturday, huh? Yeah, I, I guess that's why. the day they relax and just she doesn't worry about it. But I just like getting back into a nice Same. bed, like mm-hmm. smooth sheets and all that. Mm-hmm. And a lot of people say, "Why would you do that if you're just going to get right back in it?" But I just like it. And it, our room is right off of the living room, so you can see it. So yeah, ours is on the main floor too. So, mm-hmm. but that's not why I always have. But- it makes me sound like a really neat and tidy person, but you know, I'm not. <laughs> oh, you are. Yes, you are. There are <clears throat> other things that I never do. Like? Like um, cleaning my baseboards, dusting the ceiling fans, which I don't ever think about until we have company. Just turn the and fan I, on and That's what I do. That's what I do. I don't think about it until we have company. Then I'm like, oh, let me turn that on real quick. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. The baseboards. Yeah. And, yeah. Um, and the light switch covers. That's oh. something I never think about it, but they're always dirty. Yes. Yes. You know, who's really good about that? Cheryl yeah. Turner. Yeah. She, she doesn't just clean her baseboard. She paints them on the regular because she's like just having them that bright white freshens up hmm. the space. And it does. It always looks amazing. Hmm. But I'm like, <sighs> that's painting. I don't do painting. painting. That's right. Um, how often do you work out? Define workout. <laughs> It's some movement in of some sort. I try almost every day. And I, I just, and I would not say work out like purposely do a video or, but I'm conscious because I wear the watch that tells me my steps. So I'm conscious of it. And I try to get mm-hmm. over a certain number of steps. Not that I'm going to get out of bed. If I get, you know, look down at, oh, I'm not there. I'm not going to get out and, and do it, but I'm conscious of it. So maybe. Mm-hmm. Maybe sometimes is a better answer. About you, mm-hmm. I think I think I'm a sometimes too. I'm I'm in a jag right now where I'm a lot better about it. Um, since I'm doing the strength training with Neil, <laughs> yeah. And what I've discovered for myself is if I get up and put my tennis shoes on. So in the winter, I typically wear fuzzy socks and slippers around the house mm-hmm. all day long, and in the summer, I wear flip flops all day long around the house. Yeah. But if I get up first thing in the morning and put my tennis shoes on um, and leave them on all day, I get way more steps in. Mm-hmm. And, you know, I'm more likely to run them down the stairs or run to the yeah. basement or run laps or get my workout in or. So I don't know what it is about it, but it's just a psychological thing. If I keep it's them more on. comfortable too. Yeah. At least mine are. I'm, mm-hmm. I'm a, my feet hurt if I don't put them on. Mm-hmm. Hmm. Okay. All right. Um, do you ever go to bed with makeup on? No, I would say I always wash my face before bed, Mm -hmm. maybe occasionally like once a year, maybe, 
but the, even that I would say is a stretch. I don't know. I'm very routine in my nighttime thing. You know, what I do at night is it's going to happen or I can't go to sleep. Mm-hmm. I'm just weird like that. Mm-hmm. Do you? I'm the exact, no, I'm the exact same way. I don't ever, ever, ever go to bed with makeup on. I don't care how late I get home. <laughs> yeah. I can't stand the feeling of the caked mascara. Yeah. Yeah. I always wash my face. And the only time I haven't is on an overseas flight. Yeah. And even then I used to, I used to go to the bathroom and wash my face. And then it just got to where I thought I'm keeping somebody from coming into the bathroom. So sometimes I pack those like makeup wipes Yeah, and I'll just in the seat, you know, wash my face or whatever. But Mm -hmm. yeah, some people do go to bed with their makeup on though. Yeah, I know they do, but that's, I can't do it. I'm just weird. There's certain things that um, I feel like if I don't do them, even like if I go to bed without going to the bathroom first, I can't go to sleep until I get up and do that because mm-hmm. I think I'm going to have to get up in an hour. Even I'm going to have to get up in an hour anyway, but <laughs> I just, I'm a creature of habit when it comes to that yeah. kind of thing. Yeah. I'm the same way. I always put um, moisturizer on my feet at night when I get in bed. There's some things like I do my ablutions in the bathroom, you know, wash my face, brush my teeth, all those kinds mm-hmm. of things. And then when I get in the bed on my nightstand, I've got like this overnight lip balm kind of a thing. Yeah. And then I usually have some kind of body butter that I put on my feet and mm-hmm. <laughs> I keep a little hair mask by there. So that like once every couple of weeks, I'll just put a little hair mask on the ends of my hair, you know, mm-hmm. just things like that, that I do yeah. every single night. And yeah. I feel like now it's gotten to the point where if I don't, it's almost like I can't sleep. I can't get mm-hmm. comfortable if I don't do that. So. Yeah. It's like a niggling little thing in your head. You're going, yes. hmm, I haven't done that yet. <clears throat> yeah. Do you ever sleep in? We did this morning. Um, we were at bed until eight, which is, I can't yeah. remember the last, I know, but when you're normally like five thirty or six, it was yeah. heavenly. Yeah. So, I mean, it was the first night back in our own bed after three months. So that was one thing. And we had, it was yesterday was just a a booger of a day with trying to get all the stuff in from, and it rained as soon as we got into dripping that mm-hmm. we, we were racing a thunderstorm and we pulled in and we had like 20 minutes before it just dropped out. The bottom dropped out. So um, it was a rough day, not a rough day. It was just a physical day. And so we were both really tired. So anyway, it felt good to not have to get up for anything, not have to be mm-hmm. anywhere. So Those so are the most glorious mornings as if mm-hmm. you can ever not set the alarm and just wake up naturally. Yeah. <gasps> what a luxury. Yeah. If yeah. you can get your internal alarm to stay off. Yes. That's yeah. the problem. Right. Mm-hmm. Uh, no, we never get to sleep in because we have peaches. <laughs> yeah. I will say uh, every now and then Neil will get up a little earlier and slip out. Mm-hmm. And so that by the time he brings me my coffee, he has already, he has let me sleep in a little bit and has already gone out there and taken care of peaches. Yeah. What a guy. Oh yeah. Those are amazing. Um, do you eat an early breakfast? Um, I usually have when, as soon as I get up, I make coffee and that's kind of breakfast until maybe nine o'clock and then I'll eat an egg or whatever my usual Mm -hmm. breakfast du jour is. Mm -hmm. What do you do? Coffee first thing in the morning, mm-hmm. coffee before speaky, <laughs> all mm-hmm. that kind of stuff. Yeah. And, um, and then I typically don't eat real food until about 10 30 or 11. Yeah. Yeah. That's kind of mine's maybe not that late, but I wait. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah. Um, okay. So those are kind of daily routine kind of things. So mm-hmm. now think about some weekly routine kind of things. Um, do you take Sunday afternoon naps? No, I mean, I would say, I would say it would be just a notch above never because there's just things going on. And I, if I sleep, if I, if I can just do like a 10 minute thing, then I would, but then I usually would fall asleep harder and then the rest of the day is shot and I can't sleep that night. So no, do you? Um, Mine's between sometimes and always. So if there's like a most times, <laughs> that would be yeah. my answer because we need rare, never, rarely, sometimes, most of the time and always, time, whenever I feel like it. Yeah. yeah. Um, and it used to be when I was younger that I could not take one of those power naps. Neil always mm-hmm. could, you know, where he would just 
fall out for 10 minutes and wake up, oh, good to go. And yeah. I never could do that. And if I ever finally went to sleep, I'd have to sleep for like an hour, you know, which mm -hmm. isn't good. But in the last few years, I have no problem at all taking a power nap. And some Sunday afternoons um, after lunch, you know, we'll, um, I'll ask him to turn on a football game or whatever, you know, now it's March Madness or whatever mm -hmm. basketball. Game. It's like Pavlov for me, just that kind yeah, of the noise, sporty background noise. Mm -hmm. And I am out in no time at all. And then and you don't oh, have a hard time waking up. No, no. We usually get up and have a cup of coffee. Now, last Sunday, we didn't get a nap in. Um, so it doesn't happen every week. But when it does, it's just kind of nice. It's like a yeah. little downtime. I just feel I just feel awful groggy if I do. Yeah. It's me. Um, so I don't really know how to ask this one as a question. So I'll just say <laughs> no. I always look forward to Mondays. Mm-hmm because it's kind of a reset day for me yeah you know after the weekend it's like a fresh start every time um and we always run errands on friday so those are the other two mm -hmm. like weekly day things that we always do do you have anything like that like a weekly day thing that you always do we don't have anything routine mm -hmm. you always think about how they say one of the alzheimer's preventions is to to not have the same routine all the time and mm -hmm. I think I've got that one covered because we never you don't have the have same routine. routine. Yeah. No, there's no routine to our routine. I think I do look forward to Mondays. I think it's because we used to, when the boys were young, that was the day that John would take off. And mm -hmm. I really had to push hard for that. I, I, I told him, he means work, works 24 seven. When you do ministry, you're 24 seven, but he was working all day, every day, including Saturday and Sunday. So used to, when the boys were little, we took Mondays off and we would go into Austin and have lunch together. We might go to a Goodwill or a bookstore or whatever. So I think I look forward to Mondays still because it reminds me of what we used to do. And we're, we're together all the time now. So it's not quite the same, but yeah, yeah. I know I've heard you say you look forward to Monday reset mm -hmm. day. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Good. Um, I thought of something to say when you were in mobile that talking, <laughs> it's left me. <laughs> taking off a day was it something to do with that no it was before that <laughs> train left the station yeah it did. I know what it was y'all are probably gonna live longer because you don't have those routines you know variety is the spice of life so you have a really mm -hmm. spicy life you have a really yeah. spicy life maybe so you know one of them that I just thought about that I never thought about before you know how you're supposed to break up things you do habitually we've mentioned this on here before like if you shave your left leg first typically I was just shave thinking your, about that yeah shave your right leg when you're getting dressed if you put if you typically put your left leg in the pants first intentionally put your right well about brushing your teeth mm -hmm. I hadn't thought about that one I always brush my teeth with my right hand yeah and so the other night I tried to brush my teeth with my left hand it was so hard yeah <laughs> it felt so awkward and when I finished up, I like gave it a real good zhuzh with my right hand because I felt like I didn't do a good enough mm -hmm. job. So. Well, I think about you. This is funny that you brought that up because I always think about you even my legs because <laughs> because great. you brought that up in a class one time. You said, yeah. you were talking about this very thing and you said, if you normally shave your right leg first, shave the left. So I did one time. I shaved the left leg and then I forgot to shave the right leg. <laughs> so I don't do that anymore. The whole next day I was like, Ooh, what is wrong? Uh, it's a bad it, thing to forget. It's fun when somebody says they always think about you when they're shaving in the shower or <laughs> some other, I was thinking about that with my sister. I always think about her when I'm doing laundry. Yeah. And the other day I was thinking she'd probably be surprised if she knew I always think about her. When I'm doing Why do laundry. you think about it when you're doing laundry? Well, I was talking about the fact that we had to switch from powder detergent to liquid detergent mm. because of our septic. And I heard that powder detergent isn't as good. So, but I've always hated liquid detergent because it just feels messy to me. There's mm -hmm. always, you know, like drippy and the cap gets Sticky. drippy. And, and she said, well, I just always throw the cap in the wash with my clothes. Yeah. I and too. I was like, what? <laughs> I never heard of that. I never thought about that. And yeah. I've done that every single time since then. And every single time I'm, I'm thinking the same thing. I'm like, it's genius. I don't know why all these years I never knew yeah. that. The only problem is that when you throw it in the dryer too, and then it's clunk, 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 clunk the whole oh, time. Oh, no. <laughs> yeah. 
Okay. Um. So the kitchen. Oh, I see John. Hey, John. I don't know. Let's wave, John. Hey, John. Everybody. Hey, he's looking John. this way. He's looking. He's, he's coming this way. When's she going to be done? <laughs> he's walking away. <laughs> I can see him in the reflection in my computer. There he he's goes around the corner. Oh no, he's like. I think she's still doing on the computers. <laughs> I'm going to refrain from saying what I thought about He's that. like real, like, I'm just going to walk away calmly. Walk away slowly, yeah. <laughs> walk away slowly. Okay, the kitchen, we've kind of already talked about some of those things with the dishes, mm -hmm. but are there certain groceries that you always buy? Aside from the usual, like, milk and eggs mm -hmm. and things like that. Mm -hmm. um, well, in Texas, I, I'm sad to say that I always buy that pimento cheese from H-E-B because it's so good. And I really need to stop buying it because it's bad. Um, you eat it with chips or on a sandwich? Pretzels. Pretzels, oh, pretzels. are my downfall. I could be skinny yeah. if it weren't for pretzels. That's pretzels. Any pretzel. Mm. Well, no, because that has flavor. Just pretzel crisps or whatever, non-flavored, because I don't need flavor mixed with the pimento cheese. Mm. Um, I always buy salsa of some sort. I like Julio's. I don't know if they even make that other states if that's a texas mm -hmm. thing i think it's from san antonio um i i, don't, I, I always buy lemons mm -hmm. it's not necessarily a staple but i do what do you buy lemons is on my mm -hmm. list or any kind of citrus really i keep lemons and limes mm -hmm. olive oil um fresh herbs we've gotten into a jag here recently where we have fish tacos quite a lot mm-hmm so whatever I need to do fish tacos. <laughs> do you use the, do what kind there. of fish do you use for that? Well, there is a Sam's product. In oh, the you, yeah. Section you brought this up. It's is a, it's like a cod. Um, what is it called? It's already battered. Beer, and... beer battered cod mm -hmm. or something like that. That is so good. And recently we tried something different and we got, they had like a grilled mahi mahi kind of mm -hmm. a thing that I tried and it was not good yeah <laughs> at all it was kind of dry and very disappointing so we're going to yeah. go back to what we've been using but mm -hmm. um we buy canned salmon on the regular mm -hmm. a particular brand that we were like jasmine rice yeah um Sam Pelican have you started buying do you just buy regular rice or do you buy the already ready rice and the kind that you can heat up have you ever I, tried that? I did. I tried. They had some on sale at Kroger, mm -hmm. those little pouches of mm -hmm. the already heated up rice. So I bought a few of those, but typically I just, even when I have those, I still cook it for some reason. I don't know why, yeah. but yeah, we love I jasmine like... rice and the way it smells. And mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, I love the packs of already. It's just a, such a lazy thing and mm -hmm. I don't do it all the time because it's more expensive, but I like mm -hmm. those. It's so quick, easy. Yeah. Yeah. And, um, with like foods that we make on the regular mm -hmm. homemade pizza fish tacos we're doing a lot of rice bowls too so when I was trying those pouches out I was using it in our rice what bowls. do you put in your rice bowls um sometimes we do smoked salmon and then like shredded carrots and sliced jalapenos and Neil's bowl you know um if I do a more like salmon patties with the canned mm -hmm. salmon um we'll have rice salmon patties um the garden green beans you know and then I usually make like a a sauce with sour cream and some kind of fresh citrus in it to drizzle over the top and pretty much anything that you can put over rice we're gonna do <laughs> yeah I love a good rice bowl mm -hmm. so we do that a lot yeah um I buy carnation instant breakfast which I know is not good for you but that's my Sunday morning breakfast okay I mean, it's been that way for years. I drink and it while I'm getting you? ready. I know I drink it while I'm getting ready and <laughs> I just always have protein. Yeah. Now I add collagen powder to it for the extra protein. But mm -hmm. anyway, things yeah. we never buy anymore are milk and eggs because we have those mm -hmm. here and bread. I don't buy that anymore, but I don't buy it very often. John likes pumpernickel hmm. and I do not, but I don't use that much bread. In fact, you know, I was eating a sandwich when we were talking before and I don't do sandwiches very often, but I didn't have anything else in the house today. So all I had was peanut butter and a piece of bread that probably is from a loaf 
from early last week. That's kind of gross, but that's what I had. But see, priorities, because I did have fresh salsa that I had just gotten from the store. So you're a Texas girl through and through. Yeah. Yep. Um. All right. So let's do marriage real quick, and then we'll wrap this up. Okay. Um, do you guys go to bed together at the same time? How often do you go to bed together at the same time? Sometimes. Mm-hmm. I'm a read at night and he's watched TV at night. Mm-hmm. He doesn't watch TV any other time of the day other than at night. And I don't watch any other time except in the morning. So we're kind of opposite there. But I think we try to at least I'll I'll try to stay up until he comes to bed. Mm-hmm. But um, no, we don't like make it a point to go to bed at the same time. Do y'all? Yeah, we go to bed at the same time. Some It's more and more often I'm wanting to go to bed earlier than Neil. And I think it's because I'm not really getting good sleep anymore. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm kind of feeling like if I get an earlier start, I'll have more snippets in that not so good sleep yeah. at the night. So yeah. sometimes I'm like, I get up and he's like, are you getting ready for bed already? <laughs> like what time? Well, typically it's about 10 o'clock when we start getting up and getting ready for bed, mm-hmm. um, 10 or 10 30. And yeah. here recently, I'd be happier if we could do that around nine or nine 30, just to give me plenty of time to read and go to sleep and yeah. try to get a little more sleep in. Um, but anyway, yeah, we go, we always go to bed at the same time. Do y'all have breakfast together? We don't eat the same thing. He's making lots of noise in there. I have eggs and he has a bar of some sort. So we don't sit down to breakfast, no. But we're in the same room. So I guess we kind of do. Yeah, I think that counts. Y'all? Sometimes. Mm -hmm. Sometimes. um, Neil's trying to accomplish a lot before he heads out the door. And Mm -hmm. he writes articles. He does his Bible study. He works out or runs on the treadmill or I mean he's he's got a lot going on and he's got a full day before he even leaves for the day he really does because he gets up early but he's like hits the ground running so um so sometimes pretty often I should say to be fair we'll have breakfast together but it'll be something quick you know Mm -hmm. most of the time and then sometimes we just don't he just grabs something to take with him but yeah um do you ever go to bed mad (laughs) <laughs> yeah, sometimes. But you know, this is something that we learned. And I know we've said this before on the podcast. I think if you can just say, it, because we've tried not to mm-hmm. in years past, and we'd be up late, 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 late. And we're both like falling asleep, arguing, not arguing, mm-hmm. but just discussing. And finally, we realized, I mean, this was huge in our marriage when we realized that we can just say, you know what, I love you. We're going to be okay. It's going to be better if we just wait and things will feel better in the morning. Something about the light of day just makes things, you mm-hmm. realize you were being ridiculous about something or it tired. just, it's not important or you're more clear headed. So we have gotten to where we will agree. And this rarely happens anymore, but it used to happen a lot more often just to say, okay, we're going to have to agree. If As long as both of us are okay with it, then you're not letting the sun set on your anger, you're just agreeing to give it, give yourself some time and some rest because your body needs rest. And then you feel better about things in the morning. Mm -hmm. Do y'all? Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. I mean, it's real. It's just a fact of life. And it's not Neil, it's me. Yeah. You know, and it used to bother me a lot more because that's the advice everybody gives you at all your showers. You know, don't ever mm-hmm. go to bed mad. That's advice number one. And I'm like, well, <laughs> yeah. and we were never as, we've never been as good about it as you have. It was like saying, let's just show this for now and revisit it in the morning. You know, I'm just like, sometimes I'm just ticked off and he can always tell if I'm mad by ha- my position when I'm reading. <laughs> mm-hmm like exactly like if you're looking out the window in the car you know yeah. it's the same really way sends a message. if I'm laying on my back and reading the book things are fine but it, you know if I've turned over this way and I'm reading yeah. the book he's... <sighs> yeah. yeah yeah well I have to say it is John that will say let's wait until tomorrow but I mean he wouldn't do that until we kind of at some point when we weren't mad talked about it and just decided that this is not 
it's not unbiblical to just say, we're going to wait and talk about it later. So Mm -hmm. that made me feel better. Well, usually if something like that happens, there's nothing important anyway. I mean, right. he brings me my coffee the next morning and we just act like nothing ever happened, you know, because yeah. it's not most of the time, most of the time, I should say. Yeah. It's just something dumb. Right. It's not like an issue that needs to be addressed, you know, so. <laughs> Sometimes when we do that, if we don't address it, then it only adds to the next one. So sometimes we have to figure out, do we really need to talk about this and get it behind us or is it worth just letting it go and not, mm-hmm. and I've gotten better about letting things go. I used to be terrible about that. So yeah. anyway, it used to be that I'd be, you know, fuming over there. And then, you know, I hear, <laughs> and that I'm makes like, you, fume ah, some more. he doesn't even care. <laughs> He's just going off to sleep. <laughs> yeah. Yep. Sounds familiar. <laughs> oh, okay. Here's a never for us. We never eat dinner at the table. Really? Yeah. Well, when you have your family over, you do. Yeah, I'm just saying when it's it's just just us. If it's just the two of us. Mm -hmm. (laughs) I mean, occasionally I'll take our place to the table and we'll sit there and talk or whatever. Yeah. Every once in the blue moon. Yeah. Every once in the blue moon, I'll even light a couple candles and make it feel like a dinner, you know, but most of the time. We just both like to get really comfortable and I'll fix our plates and carry them in there. And we're, our, our comfy chairs are situated right next to each other. Mm -hmm. (laughs) I'll kick my shoes off and put my knees up under me and we'll either watch something or we'll just talk, but it's in the living room, you know, not at the table. And that's just another one of those things where you always say, you know, have your food at the table and make it an experience. Like you're really, and I'm going, whatever. (laughs) Yeah. Well, I think when you have a young family, yes, you do different. need to do that. Yeah. yeah we did different. that mm-hmm. with our children. We ate at the table and we were all yeah. together. And, but I'm just saying now, you know, we just never do. So yeah. Yeah. John will sit over and watch TV or the news or whatever. And I sit at the table a lot with my book and read. Mm-hmm. That's just what I like to do. So, mm-hmm. and yeah. we're together enough that I don't feel bad about that. I mean, mm-hmm. we communicate enough. I'm not worried about it, but for all of you <laughs> listening who have children at home, you do need to sit down to dinner together as don't, much as possible. Don't be like us. <laughs> yeah. We're just old married people. Um, do you, all right. How often do you guys go on a date? All Always, a date? sometimes, never. Mm-hmm. Sometimes. Sometimes. There he is. He'll say. <laughs> there he goes. He's probably thinking, yeah. when are they going to stop talking? <laughs> Can read his mind. Read his body language. Yeah. Um, sometimes sometimes. Mm -hmm. he'll just say, I'm going to take you out tonight. So Mm -hmm. that's usually when he comes to the kitchen and I have nothing started for dinner. And I'm like, "Hmm, it's going to, we can have tacos again. Let me take you out. I'd say date date though, probably rarely like where you get dressed up and go out on an intentional date. Probably not as much as we should. Do y'all? Oh, no, we don't do that. Mm-mm. For our anniversary. Yeah. Yeah. We'll anniversary. Out. But sometimes we are, it's, mo- it's a, it's an often thing. Mm-hmm. Neil will say on Friday mornings, cause that's his day off. Let's go get breakfast. And we usually go to Panera and get a bagel. And so it doesn't happen every week because sometimes he's either not here or there's stuff going on. But when it does, we try and do that. And that's really fun. I yeah. enjoy that. But, yeah. Good. Um, I can, are there any more under the marriage thing that you want to hit? Oh, I don't know. I wasn't prepared. So no. You <laughs> this is favorite. your week. Those are my favorite kinds of conversations though. Mm-hmm. I feel yeah. like you're putting that on me. Like if this bond, this is, this is all on you, girl. This yeah. is your week. Uh-huh. Wow. Well, this is fun. All right. Let's fun. go ahead and share our fun announcement and I'm going to let you do it because it was your idea. What? Well, but what? it was your idea to tell it. But it was that the the announcement itself, the project itself was your idea. So you get to share it. Oh, I don't know if I'm prepared for this. Well, so Kathy and I, for those of you listening, have talked about putting together a cookbook slash, um, I don't know, what, what other word would you say besides cookbook? Because we talked about doing other things mm-hmm. in it, having mm-hmm. um, projects in it, just a fun kind of um 
mostly like 90% cookbook, 10% tips, projects, cookbook maybe some craft and, ideas and things. Yeah. <laughs> I'm, I'm picturing cookbook apostrophe in things. Um, but we, we're in the planning stages of putting this together with our favorite recipes and um, we're, we want it to be something that's really quality put, put together with, you know, color photos and photos of our recipes as we create them or as we make them. And so that's, that's the intent. We're hoping to do this, get started on it before too long. Don't have any idea how long it'll take. Um, we don't have a name for it. I don't know. What would, what else would you say about it? I think you covered it. It'll just be a looking up cookbook. So some of the things that we share in there will be recipes or our memories or things that we've talked about here on the podcast. And mm -hmm. um, I, when you shared that idea with me, I got really excited about it. I thought that would be very fun. Very fun. Do you think that was my idea mm -hmm. or yours? Because, well, it was sort of both because when, in that book that you gave me for Christmas, it said, one one of the pages said something we should do together is, and you put write, we should write together. And so then I started thinking, do you remember that? I do, but I think the cookbook thing was yours. I, yeah. It seems like yeah, I remember but, you saying, we should do a cookbook. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, it was kind of along the lines of, of hmm. writing together. So, because we could also put some other things in there that we might want to write about, not mm -hmm. articles necessarily, but just, mm -hmm family tips and things like that. So we're excited about it and we're just kind of in the mulling over planning. I mean, I've set a, set recipes aside and you have to, and taking some pictures and things. So um, we would love to hear what you all think about that idea. Thumbs up, thumbs down. I can't imagine anybody, unless they were trying to hurt our feelings, which no one does saying <laughs> no way, don't do that. But, um, but we would love to hear what you all think about it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So anyway, we will keep you posted on that. We'll give you heads up as we make progress and let you know when it'll be ready. And I'm excited. I think it'll Me be too. fun. Mm -hmm. Yeah. We're going to have to All put right. our nose to the grindstone. And that is our combined something good for you because neither one of us really <laughs> came up with anything. We didn't really need to tell everybody that, did we? <laughs> well, yeah, I told you, but I had something in, lined up that I ended up changing my mind. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Next week we'll return to your regular schedule. I did. Something let's, good for you. Let's let our little announcement be. Yeah. Something good for you. Yeah. And next week I will not sit in this creaky chair. I haven't noticed it until you just now said something about it. Now you can hear it, right? Now I can hear it. Uh -huh. Okay. Hmm. I've been noticing it the whole time. Well, I think that was fun. I enjoyed learning some more about you just when you think you know somebody. Did I pass your test? <laughs> actually i don't think any of your answers surprised me yeah none of your surprised me either yeah so i do know you yeah you do <laughs> all right um maybe next week we'll talk about something serious yeah <laughs> yeah i get to choose next week so That's right. very but, serious but until then just looking at yes and welcome back to texas enjoy getting settled back in and i'm glad you guys made it safe I love yeah, you. I love you too. Talk, Talk to you soon. soon. All right. Bye.